crop. But there were a few takers. The widow who liked me but chastised me for being on online dating sites despite being emotionally unavailable so soon after divorce. The hearing specialist who texted LOL after every single typed sentence. The woman who turned out to be the sister of a guy I knew at work, which led both of us to shake hands and say, Welp, this is a shit idea. Have a nice life and stuff. Before a date, I'd coach myself. Don't talk about your divorce. Don't talk about your divorce. Don't talk about your divorce. I talk about my divorce before the appetizers arrived. Idiot. I sucked ass at dating. Not only did I cry too much, but my hair was graying. I was the father of a four-year-old, which instantly weeds out a ton of people disinterested in stepmotherhood. And the politely outraged widow was right. I was there to combat loneliness, not to make authentic human connections that might lead to healthy, sustainable relationships. I'd think about how unfair it felt that my wife seemed so happy in her new life and relationship while I was binge-watching Netflix through tears, miserable and alone. I'm going to die a lonely incel, and that shit-eater is going to hug my son and French-kiss my wife next to my casket before he flies them to an amazing African safari vacation, where my wife will inevitably celebrate my passing with some uncomfortably hot sex act we never tried and say, Ha 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 ha! I bet Matt sat around crying all the time and no girls wanted to kiss him. What a small little loser he was. I'm so glad I'm here with you instead of him. That's seriously what I thought about. They were dark times. One night, while freaking out and self-medicating with vodka, I called a therapist on a 1-800 number, and I'm pretty sure she thought I was a loser. She asked me questions about my life. I probably offered, um, I'm getting divorced, I'm involuntarily celibate, I'm pretty sure that some guy I don't know is sticking his penis inside of my wife. Things are awesome. Thanks for asking. She said, since you're a writer, I think it would be good for you to start a journal. Just write down what you feel. She probably meant that I should write things in a private journal. Instead, I got a little drunk and put it on the internet. From divorce blogger to relationship coach to book author. I started the blog Must Be This Tall to Ride in 2013 as a means of processing my grief and anger following my divorce per the phonotherapist's suggestion. She encouraged me to write my feelings, so that's what I did. It was supposed to be a dark comedy documenting my trials and tribulations as a recently divorced, midlife crisis-having single father trying to date and start a new life. I thought it would be funny in a dysfunctionally pathetic way. I treated it almost like a journal. It was easy to write vulnerably and authentically because I felt too miserable to care what anyone thought of me, and because there didn't seem to be any danger of anyone reading it. But then people totally read it, and provided feedback. A small but engaged and growing audience formed. Those people saved my life in several ways. People liked the writing, they said. It helped them feel less alone, they said. My public self-reflections on marriage and divorce felt personal and familiar to them, they said. I'm not the only one, we discovered collectively. The fact that people were paying attention changed everything. Am I going to contribute to the empty calorie clickbait noise, or am I going to try to do something that matters? I had been writing sad and angry tales of how I felt my ex-wife was mistreating me and being unfair to me, and how hard my life was, and me, 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 sprinkled with a little more me. And then on July 3rd, 2013, during my first out-of-town trip without my wife following our separation, I wrote and published a blog post titled, An Open Letter to Shitty Husbands, Volume 1. It's not very good. It wasn't important because of its quality. It was important because it represented a critical shift in the way I had been thinking about my failed marriage. I began to ask because...